Hey, how's it going? Uh, I want to talk briefly about the text that I've chosen for this semester. Uh, and before I talk about it, let me just share a few quotations with you. And you can see those quotations below. Uh, and let me just read through them and then give you a quick explanation about why I chose the text that I chose. Okay? So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, it says this, uh, in inner ears, the little seashells, the thimble radios tamped tight, and an electronic ocean of sound, of music and talk and music and talk coming in, coming in on the shore of her unsleeping mind. Right? So just think about that description. In a sense, it's kind of like we've got our, our iPods plugged in, right? And so we're just being fed all of the information that's coming from the iPod. Uh, here, let's just jump forward very quickly. I got another little excerpt and you can see it below. Uh, people don't talk about anything. Oh, they must. No, not anything. They name a lot of cars or clothes or swimming pools mostly and say, how swell. But they all say the same things and nobody says anything different from anyone else. Uh, one more very quickly. You can take a look. What's wrong, Montag? Montag opened his eyes. A radio hum somewhere. War may be declared any hour. This country stands ready to defend its... And then it pauses. Now, I give you those three quotations uh, because I find them interesting in terms of just how relevant they seem to be to the world that we live in now. And yet, Fahrenheit 451 was published in 1953. And so one of the reasons that I've chosen this particular novel is because the novel itself seems to deal with the issues that we currently face. Uh, and even more specifically, many of the issues that the novel deals with are the very issues that I've introduced to you in the last week. That is, the novel seems to get at the impacts of literacy on the culture. Let me take you to one more quotation, and this is the quotation that comes from the introduction to the novel. Uh, and again, you have that one below too. And it says this, what speculative fiction is really good at is not the future, but the present. Taking an aspect of it that troubles or is dangerous and extending and extrapolating that aspect into something that allows the people of that time to see what they are doing from a different angle and from a different place. It's cautionary. So I hope that by reading this novel, we may be able to see from a different angle and potentially from a different place what it is that we're doing in the culture. And that potentially we can see that as cautionary. So I hope that we can make a lot of connections between what's happening in the novel and the foundational notions of critical literacy. And I look forward to having great conversations with you. Take care.